It is a sunny Saturday here in the city, but we are escaping to some darker skies. We were going camping with Rudy, me and Ashley and Rudy, so it should be a great time. And most importantly, it is going to be clear tonight. The forecast held true. We booked this camping trip months ago, and uh, wouldn't you know it, we lucked out. Okay, now I gotta decide what I'm bringing. Hmm, I'm thinking a wide field setup. I am gonna bring a small telescope. And then I'm also going to bring a very portable camera and lens set up for some wide field imaging. Oh, it's going to be sweet. So how does this work? I pack all the astronomy stuff, you pack what we actually need for camping, right? Everything else. The thing I always kind of feel bad about, about going to a public campsite and bringing my astrophotography gear is that people will walk by the campsite and they see the telescope and they see the tripods and the cameras and they say, oh, can I look through your telescope? And I have to tell them, no, you can't actually look through it. You can look at me taking pictures, but I don't have anything for you to see. Added benefit to using the rubber bin for your laptop also doubles as the perfect way to transport all your gear. Yes, I am bringing my old HEQ5. I am done with forgetting to bring things. I will bring two of everything if I have to. I will have everything I need under these perfect Bortle Class 4 skies. The best spot for tripod legs. This is really cool, you gotta see this. So speaking of being prepared, I'm bringing the Ioptron Sky Tracker to do some wide field camera lens work. And it can be charged with the mini USB. And just in case it's not fully charged enough, I have this solar powered USB charger. So this is another Amazon gem. It's got the solar panel on there. Even if it somehow died, <laughs> it's fully charged now. If it somehow died from here to the campsite, I can charge it with solar from there. Good boy. Are you excited, Rudy? So the place we're headed is a campground in Southern Ontario. It's right on the shore of Lake Erie. I was actually there two years ago, almost to the date, that video where I shot the Andromeda Galaxy. That was at this park, Rock Point Provincial Park. We got a great campsite. I actually have power this time, but I'm gonna plug in my, my rig to take some deep sky astro photos through a telescope, as well as some uh, more mobile wide field stuff. I might walk down to the beach with it. I'm not sure yet, but either way, the forecast looks great. I've got a, I chose a campsite with a lot of open sky, which also means that there's not a lot of shade. So we'll be kind of baking in the sun all day, but either way, I'm really excited. Get hot dog buns? How many did you get? Six. Six hot dogs, six hot dog buns. Best hot dog buns in the city. Okay, so there is a lot to unpack. This is the spot here, as you can see. A nice opening to the east. Clear view to the north for Polaris. South, not so much, but we're gonna be shooting something right up here. Here's a look at the campsite. What do you think? Ready to camp. Keep pumping. Okay, so that's me on the right, Ashley on the left, Rudy in the middle. Be nice to sleep on the same air mattress, but I think we all know that doesn't work. I was scared to check the 
clear outside up in case the weather had changed. Because sometimes it does, but we're in luck. It's still clear for tonight. We took Rudy down to the beach. He had a great swim. He's a good fetcher. Found a nice stick for him. And uh, it just went to the park store to get some firewood. Two bags of firewood. Yeah, it's just beautiful weather here at the park. It really doesn't get any better than this. And I'm just so excited for what's to come tonight when that sun finally sets. You gonna start the fire for me too? Ooh, birch Good bark. Stuff. Good cheater. Well, it is. Uh, 740 the Sun is setting if you haven't noticed already I've got two rigs set up here this is the primary imaging rig for tonight which is the Skywatcher HEQ 5 with the William Optics Zenith Star 73 you've seen the scope a lot that's for sure with a DSLR camera attached the Canon 60 DA so on this rig the plan is to shoot the Andromeda Galaxy the entire galaxy will fit in with this telescope just fine and uh, that's an object where you really need dark skies to do it justice because it is a broadband galaxy target so i can't use narrow band filters and cheat the way i do with nebulae from home so a great target for a place like this and something i haven't shot since then so it's been about two years on the other rig i've got the sky guider pro the ioptron sky guider pro with uh, my canon t3i modified and then the uh, rokinon 135 millimeter lens so that's a super wide field setup. Uh, again, shooting in broadband with that one. Uh, the filter is the Optolong L Pro. I'm just taking advantage of the dark skies I have here. And uh, the target, I'm not really sure because I can't really tell where I'm situated exactly. I mean, I can see the sun setting in the west, so I know I'm looking pretty well north, but I'm not sure what the obstructions are like. I'd love to shoot something in the Milky Way wide field at 135, uh, but it might end up being the Heart and Soul Nebula in Cassiopeia. Uh, because that's in the east and uh, I know I'm gonna get that and it's gonna rise nice and high. So very excited to get started. Just need it to get dark out. Okay, I am up and running, and I want you to tell me what I'm shooting, okay? Let's see if she gets it. You're gonna ask me all these trick questions. <laughs> okay, so what are we looking at there? What am I shooting? Started. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get it wrong. The Heart Nebula? <laughs> no. Uh, North uh, Pelican or North American? No. Not North American. I don't know. What? Look at this one, it's got blue and pink. Yeah, because that's not like What's any... What's this one? Let me turn the auto stretch on. Hold on, now you'll be able oh, to tell. Oh, that'll watch. help. No, it will, watch. Booyah! What is it now? Mm, did I process this data? Yes. <laughs> what is it? I don't remember. <laughs> I apologize for the strange lighting. It's very dark out here. Come with me, I want to show you what I'm working on. This is the Skyguider Pro, and on this I'm shooting uh, the Veil Nebula Complex, so the Cygnus Loop. I get the whole thing in uh, on the 135, and there's a star cluster to the right of this, uh, this nebula region, so that's in the frame as well. And I've taken about 30 subs on that so far. I'll put together an image there, and on the other rig, more, even more exciting, through the telescope, we are shooting the Andromeda Galaxy, and uh, this is just recently framed up and I uh, started auto guiding on it. Actually, it's still, uh, I just finished calibrating the auto guiding, I haven't even started shooting. Uh, but the reason for that was because it was behind a tree, but it's now high enough so I can start collecting some two minute images 
at, uh, I think I'm shooting at ISO 800, but I'll, I'll determine those finally soon. But that's what's going on here. So um, these are the rigs set up in the dark. I'm gonna turn this off now because people are starting to wonder. I just wanted to show you what I'm looking at on astrophotography tool through the laptop of the images I'm taking of the Andromeda Galaxy. Being out here under these Bortle Class 4 dark skies means collecting a lot more signal in a shorter period of time. It's not that I'm collecting a lot more signal, it's just a better signal to noise ratio per shot. So much more so than, than home. The, the light emitted from my deep sky object is shining through and I'm not picking up nearly as much background sky glow from that light pollution from the city out here. So if you can see the image on the screen there, you can see the glow of the nucleus of the Andromeda galaxy. But watch what happens when I press the auto stretch, which is basically just like performing an aggressive curve stretch in Photoshop. Look at that, the Andromeda galaxy and its companions there, like it is just, massive and glorious and it's out there and it's real and, and these images are happening right now this is the last sub uh, that was taken you know less than two minutes ago uh, we're 90 seconds into another one uh, which will be the seventh frame I'll stack all these together into what should be just an incredible image through the telescope <laughs> 